Cast me now! I was muted this whole time. Welcome everybody. I use Sony Vegas. Um, I may or may not have a crack tool for that, that you could use. I may or may not also have it on file that I could send you via email. And I may or may not have a link to a Google Drive. Actually, hold on. I might have a link for you. <laughs> okay. It's easily... The hardest day. Yeah, yeah. Let me go to let me go to YouTube. What's up, everybody? How's it hanging? How's everybody's Wednesday afternoon going and flowing? I'm trying to get this thing fixed, but it's not. It just keeps fucking. You already, you, already, you guys already know. You already know what it is. Let's go. I done. Let me go to YouTube. There's this guy that I got it from. I trust him. What's up, Erica? The hair is not it. Hey, hey, we don't talk about the hair. Speaking of which, we don't talk about the hair. We need to get that hair cut. That's what we need, bro. We actually got some activity on this one. Maybe I should stick. Maybe I should stick with the reaction channel to live stream on instead of the other thing. Let me find that video for you, Bihal. Oh shit! I just uh. uh we gotta go to university, bro. University. Um, universal. Oh. Universally. Universally oh. trending. Trending. I fucking love universal. 
Gamer rages and gets kicked off a college team. Kind of want to see that. Kind of want to see that. Oh, all right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, uh. Let's see, Sony Vegas. I gotta see this. This is not the video. The video I saw had a Deadpool guy in it. Actually, this might work. Let's see. Maybe it's this one. Hey, what if it is this one? Okay. What if it is this one? Oh, it's this one. No, it is one. Three. The guy I found on YouTube had a Deadpool background, and the dude was absolutely awesome. Maybe it was this one. By the way, that thing is live. Oh, yeah, I know it's live. What's live? The thing. What thing? The thing that I said we'd, I'd make. Oh, shit! That's what I sent you yet the name of yesterday. You know, I'm just a hating ass bitch. Big small. Oh, we don't want that. Boom. <coughs> I believe this should work. <laughs> no shot. I'll be back. Say less. All right, we got it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Why does the camera look like it's got a filter on it? Yo, chat. What the fuck is up with that? What the fuck is up with this? Yo, I'm going, we going back into Hogwarts. Hoggy Woody Warts. Um, I don't really know what we're... We just got to get to level 34. What's going to get us to level 34 the quickest? I don't know. I don't know. Let me go. How to level up fast in Hogwarts. Because these side missions is just not it. Reach the max level. Alright, let's, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. We could keep it over here real quick. But I'm going to have to go to big small real quick. Let's see how this works. It's not working. A 44 achievement. Yeah, we need to get... We're, we're eight levels away. I need to get to the level 40. Jesus Christ, YouTube. We'll namely lose very prominent XP sources, so cannot level up from combat anymore, or doing certain activities that did reward experience before are now gone. So it's important to know how to still improve your character as loot, of course, mm, drops mm, on mm, your mm. current level. So the higher you are, the better the gear That's will right. be. 
enemies are limited to their region level so if you are a high level there will be a bigger gap between you and those combat targets and there's also a trophy or achievement for reaching level 40. so i got a lot of tricks on how to level up fast and i also want to tell you how this system works the most important thing to know is that gaining xp is always linked to the challenges from your field guide maybe you already figured this out but what this basically Jeez, means is that you only get experience by working towards one of these objectives and this also means that if you let's say killed enough spiders for all the cosmetic rewards then the next time you kill a spider you get a zero xp so that source of experience is gone. Oh, the word. same is the case for the field guide pages in Hogwarts, Hogsmeade and the open world. There are luckily more than you need for these challenges. But this also means that finding them after you got all the field guide rewards doesn't help you with leveling up anymore. Still the field guide pages are one of the easiest things you can do to quickly level up. They give 80 XP per find. Wow. There's no combat of course involved. And they're... This whole time bro. Arenas. I want to see arenas. Because I haven't done jack shit on arenas. I don't even know what they look like. The arena. There are three in the world. Two accessible for everyone. One is over here on the map in the North Fort. North Fort. Bog region and the other one over here. It's over there. Let's go get it then. Listen, guys, we're gonna get this. Thank you. Thank you. I want to get this. Uh, Supposed arena. I just want. I we just gotta look. Let me just gotta look. What's good, Twitch? What's good, Twitch? Okay, yeah, definitely right here. It's definitely right there. We got it. We got him, ladies and gentlemen. We got him. All right, boom. Do do do. A uh, balloons. Oh yeah, we gotta do these things too, for sure. For sure. Let's just get these balloons out the way. Where's the flight path take them? What the hell? Am I dumb? I see those two over there, but where's the awesome nefarious type shit, bro? Dumb beasts for everyone. Okay. There's one behind that tree line. We really need to get up into these levels. I knew we'd find it. Eventually. There we go. XP. All right, I will be back later. I have some I have to go take care of. You scared the shit out of me. How do I activate the arena? Oh. You hear me? Yep. All right, I'll I'll let you know when I'm back. All right, cool, cool beans, right, cool beans. Uh. Uh. Bam. I got to 20 of these, bro. This is stupid. Twenty of these stupid little seven more. Six more. Get another vantage point, eh? Good and evil merely indicates a limited imagination, in my opinion. Oh, wow, okay. That's about five right there. One more.
Ah, got him. Oh, she. Oh, shit, here we go. Chat, I just want to get a level 34. I'm going to be real with y'all. I just want to get a level 34. Just so I can take my owls. Then I'm going on live. And then I'm watching the rest of Harry Potter. What does this mean? We're on story mode, by the way. We switched it up after we beat the game. Let's get this over with, shall we? Oh, let me do this. Hold up. That combo. Oh, I should, uh... Boom, easy. I let a cadaver. This is getting boring as fuck. Okay, I'm kind of over this now. I'm not gonna cap. Uh, what's up, Tammy? Oh, that's what we're gonna do today, actually. I'm not gonna lie. Let me pull that video up. I'm not gonna lie. That's what we're doing today. I just got a Discord notification. The thing was loud as hell. You're on vacation up at the coast? Whoa, whoa. Rock feed. That's kind of crazy, actually. That's kind of crazy. Poor fella. I. Oh, dude, I'm so close to 33. Wait! You live where <laughs> that's what they said in Hawaii. I live where other people vacation. Room of requirement. Oh, upgrade my gear ten times. Rescue twenty beasts. Breed ten unique beasts. Fuck that. I've only breeded two. That's what they said to me in Hawaii. What is combat? What is what am I doing here? What is this? Dog bogs? We gotta get those. Though I fucking hate in Fury. Defeat 12 famous foes. We need a few more spiders. Spiders. Defeat trolls. Mongrels. What is this? 32 dueling feats. 
Jeez, Louise. You made him Just get him out of here. I'm the greatest wizard known to man. Ooh. I'm only 20 years before Tom Riddle. Excuse me. Expelliarmus. Blow a poacher executioner after their blast attack. Crucio, the Cruciatus curse. Of course. Shame. Oh my goodness. Oh my days. Kill all the other ones. There. We just killed all of them. Just turned him into a chicken. Fuck, dude, I really don't want to do deal with spiders anymore. Arrest the momento. Of course. Momento. Alright. I will come back to this in a minute. Because I only wanted to be live for an hour. I wanted to watch this. Three minutes? I must have had my mouse hovered over it. Oops. This band disrupted the metal oh, scene and most importantly, it's, so it's a song that introduced a new sound to current metal fans and non-metal right. fans worldwide. How did we get from the times of brutal and trashy metal to kawaii metal? Hey, metal. listen. How did we get to gimme chocolate? This is the story of baby metal. Let me record this. All right. This is the story of uh, Baby Metal. How did we get to Gimme Chocolate? It's very interesting. Very interesting. We went from cute metal, or we went from trashy metal to cute metal. All right. To get to Gimme Chocolate, we have to go back to a sixth grade alive, and that is... Kei Kobayashi or Koba Metal, where he will be influenced with music from bands like Seikima 2. This kid is definitely into metal, and he would eventually grow up and enter the Japanese entertainment industry by joining a talent agency called Amuse Inc. Wait, Amuse what? Inc. is a Japanese entertainment company that provides management services to artists, including idols, musicians, oh, and so okay, on. Word. They would also produce TV and radio programs, commercial films, and movies. So you can tell, Amuse is loaded with cash and they can pretty much do anything they want. Kei Kobayashi would spend the early years of his career doing media promotion for visual K bands such as CM Shade and Cascade. After all, that is where his musical interest lies, metal music. But his days of managing bands in the genres he loved would eventually be numbered as Japan began to experience a shift of musical preference. Idol music is on the rise thanks to groups like Morning Musume that introduce a system of changing group members, something that will be relevant later on in this story. And when we got to 2010s, AKB48 were a massive hit and the idol industry experienced so, rapid okay, growth okay, the was the name of a band? phenomenon the nickname group? of idol boring period. I don't know about the wars that the idols had to fight among rival factions. All I know is that Kei Kobayashi has a mental battle for him to fight. Because if you have any experience of working with big corporate companies, it's that businesses follows trends. This means that our metal loving Kei Kobayashi would have to sink his teeth into to idol projects. On March 14, 2009, Kei Kobayashi yeah, found himself accompanying a badass visual K band named 
So essentially, he, he was faced with the fact of either having to create the trend or a trend or grit his teeth to go with the idle performances. Okay. Okay. That's kind of crazy because we know how this ends. Name. Oh, sorry. I made a mistake. He accompanied a young girl group aged 10 to 11 years old by the name of Mini Party. What Mini Party fuck? is a Patricia team group that would eventually be part of a group that Baby Metal is in together. And also, both Yui Metal and Moa Metal would subsequently be future members of that oh, group. Holy Lots of okay, so they're still on the left and right. That's kind of crazy. Linkage is here. The event of Kei Kobayashi accompanying Mini Party is to make an appearance at the farewell concert of Karen Girls, of which Su Metal was a member. Koba Metal didn't know it at that time, but this little girl called Suzuka Nakamoto would eventually be a massive boost to his career later on, as Amuse had plans to put together a new idol group, which centers around the theme of young high school girls. And who's gonna manage this group of school girls? You know it. Also, I have to mention that Kobayashi did weird. took notice of young Suzuka's vocal chops. Mizuno Yui was also present at the concert. Just saying, lots of linkages. Sakura Gakuin, or Cherry Blossom Academy in English, was formed in 2010 and contains around 10 to 12 members. The group members are within the Japanese compulsory education age range, between 10 and 15 years old. At that time, Su Metal, Yui Metal, and Moa Metal were at the age of 10 and 12 when they first debuted as Sakura Gakuin members. Within that year, will also Whoa. mark their first appearance in the subunit called Baby Metal. To explain the idea of a subunit, we have to understand how Sakura Gakuin works. The academy, not a real academy, carried themes of school life and extracurricular club activities. They would release videos of them taking lessons from various senseis, performing in short skits, taking road trips, going through yearly tests, and others. When the academic year ends at the end of March, the group releases an annual studio album. New members transfer into the group and others who finish compulsory education will be graduating, or in short, leaving the group. Su Metal would spend 3 years in the group before graduating, while Yui Metal and Moa Metal would spend 5 years before leaving the group. Members of Sakura Gakuin also belong to one or more of its subunits, which are modeled after school extracurricular what? clubs. Sort of like you could be in a cooking club and tennis club at the same time. Each club performed with its own theme and musical genre. So that's why it's perfectly normal to see Sakura Gakuin mimicking clubs of a genuine school such as tennis, science, cooking, metal, journalism. Wait, hang on. Kind of weird to think of how a school has cooking, science, journalism, baton, metal club? Like this doesn't fit at all with the theme of a school. It sticks out like a sore thumb. What is this, Koba? What are you trying to sneak up on us? Hear me out, guys. It's going to work. I remember back in the day there was an interview that is probably taken down by now Whoa. to protect Baby Metal's mystique. In it was Koba Metal saying that he was unsure what to do with this group's music as he loves producing metal songs. So he took this opportunity to create a metal club to satisfy his passion project desires. Baby Metal was sort of his outlet to do whatever he wanted. You had to imagine, this was the time he had to produce 10 idol group songs and only one metal song. I'm not saying the group idol songs were bad. In fact, I love most of them. I'm just saying that let the man have at least one song before he goes nuts. In December 2010, Sakura Gakuin released its major debut single, Yume ni Mukate, Hello Ivy. Those songs were excellent and are one of my top favorite songs from the group. Yumeni Mukate carries a happy and jumpy mood and even has a very noticeable rock-driven guitar that I absolutely love. Mind you, this is supposed to be an idol song. This song being their debut carries significant meaning to many of the group's original members. It is mentioned by Yui Metal that this is her favorite Sakura Gakuin song. When watching back the music video of this song and thinking in hindsight, what's cool about Sakura Gakuin is the planning that goes behind it. Check out Yumeni Mukate and see how at the 10th second, you can see the clever placement of Suzuka, Yui, and Moa as a unit performing part of the choreography. But it's not just with Baby Metal. Other subunit members were also carefully planned in each of those shots in the music video. Fortunately, I can't just put their video over here because Amuse is really strict about their content. This is true. If you do want to check a better version of this documentary, then go over to patreon.com slash Japan to watch the version where I free reign with the videos and even use Baby Metal Song as the soundtrack of this documentary. Okay. Let me tell you this, it hits different. Also, I would love to do more documentary about Baby Metal where I talk more about Sue Metal, Yui Metal, and Moa Metal. Perhaps even Kami Ben. And this guy is good. This guy's really 
really good. subscribe to this channel and support me for more baby metal content. I'll be subscribing to this guy for sure. Suppose you are wondering about the 10th anniversary that baby metal was referencing. In that case, it originates from this time when they were still a subunit performing for the greater goal of Sakura Gakuin, which is to become a super lady. Yes, getting the girls to become a super lady is the goal of the academy and it's up to them on defining the meaning of that. So if you think about it, Sue Metal and Moa Metal has definitely achieved that. Yui Metal meanwhile will be carving out her new meaning of a super lady. Let's continue to support her. As a subunit, Baby Metal's first ever song Doki Doki Morning is included in Sakura Gakuin's first album. I didn't know about Sakura Gakuin at first and I could imagine someone new listening to the album going from Hello Ivy to Doki Doki Morning will definitely make them scratch their head. Doki Doki Morning sticks out like spikes on a road or an oasis in a desert. You cannot not notice it. Though the music genre and its mixing sound nothing like the other songs, Doki Doki Morning's vocal melody is the chain that continues the flow wow. of Sakura Gakuin influences in the album, thus tying everything together. Baby Metal would eventually make their live debut at Sakura Gakuin Festival 2010. This is when we get to see the first incarnation of the Baby Metal style, which is the lowly gothic girlish type of look. Not only that, but we were also grazed by the performance of the legendary white shirt fan. Around this time, the girls openly declared that they were not fans of metal music and were rather shocked at it. Dabbing into this new style of music in their young career also brought them new experiences. The girls were surprised by the audience laughing when they were lying down during the Doki Doki Morning song break and laughing at a metal song. That's not what we metal heads do. But to the fans, this was not a metal experience, but another part of the Sakura Gakuin experience where they could dance and shout signature chants usually heard mm. at an idol festival. The 10 girls have a small but solid fan base because Sakura Gakuin allows fans to be invested in the group's members. Episodes like Nendo Test, Low Girl, yearly appearances in Hot Wave showcases their personalities, Wait, the friendships, and growth. This is a little so weird. That's a little weird. I'm going to get fans talking about the Lorians and Tomatoes. It was a product of this time. From that, there were also way much more media promotions the girls would participate in. Something that the baby metal in the future doesn't do as much. Or maybe they were just A. Not given a chance to B. Mm. Have to protect the mystic of the group C. Language barrier before the girls were able to speak English well enough or D, whatever Koba Metal is thinking when managing this project. Baby Metal as a subunit were allowed to make appearances in interviews unmanaged. They have the free reign to express whatever their youth allows them to because they're just kids. As they grew older, the girls would tackle overseas interviews with predetermined answers such as On visa, Fox got nuts. By the time 2011 came, huh. Sakura Gakuin would continue marching forward with the release of their second album, Friends, which I think is the best Seshi album, and as well as continuing the motion of the other subunit's music such as Twinkle Stars, Sleep Peace, Mini Party, and Baby Metal. This was when they debuted their next song called Ine mixing sounds that were similar to the bands such as Fear and Loading in Las Vegas. And the following year of 2012 would see the debut of Headbanger, Baby Metal's third song. According to Moa Metal and Yui Metal, the song has such a brutal choreography, they were unable to move their necks the following day after practice. Baby Metal would also make an appearance outside of Japan in an anime festival at Singapore, something that Sakura they got Gakuin anime festival? had not achieved uh, yet. Duh. This is an early sign of Baby Metal having far more potential than its main unit, but all good things will come to its end. 2012 is also when Hitbanger would be the last Baby Metal song within the idol group as Suzuka Nakamoto, the Seto Kaicho, is graduating. Remember the structure I was talking about earlier? So many questions regarding Baby Metal status were in people's mind. But each time a door closes, a greater one will open. With no longer being under the umbrella of an idol group, Baby Metal would begin to open up its own path that was not guided by Sakura Gakuin's format. As Suzuka puts it in the graduation, Sakura Gakuin songs are special. As that year's leader, who usually carries the most vocal lines, you could picture how Suzuka would do her best to bring out Sakura Gakuin. But for the first time ever, Suzuka will embrace the metal side fully and lead Baby Metal not as a subunit, but as a primary vehicle this time. On January 9, 2013, Baby Metal debuted on a major record label with Ichime Dame Zetai. This was a song that you could tell was different than yes, the Baby Metal that's music one of my they favorites. had in Sakura Gakuin. Some prime examples can be seen in a much more mature sounding arrangement. 
deeper meaning that focuses on stopping bullying and of course, guitar solos. That is a first for baby metal. Ijime Dame Tetai was proving to be a big hit for the band as it sold 19,000 copies in its oh, first week. My cat's and here. And number six in the Oricon weekly singles chart. It was also... Hold on. Cairo. What are you doing, buddy? What do you want, buddy? Oh no, he's touching keys now. Hey. Hey. What do you want? There's another one. Oh, it's on my feet. It's Jada. Uh, there's a Discord link in the description. Buddy, I don't know what... I don't know what you want, buddy. Booding ding. Booding ding. Buddy, I'm just trying to watch the baby metal video. Are you trying to watch the baby metal video? I don't know what you want. I don't know what you want. No, 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 no. Right, go on, little buddy. Okay. See you later. We're also carefully planning each of those shots in the music video. Fortunately, I can't just put their video over here because Amuse is really strict about their content. Alright, we're back. In its first week, and debuted at number 6 in the Oricon Weekly Singles Chart. It was Don't also used way. as a closing song for their live performance at Budokan. Now that's Budokan. something. Oh now my god. Band, Baby Metal One of the greatest, no greatest sources like for Baby Metal live streams. And had to take a more um, band driven videos. approach to grow by performing in front of live audiences. Hey. They did that by entering into the heart of rock and metal fans by making appearances in Summer Sonic Festival and Sonosphere. As Sonosphere? a band boldly declaring themselves as Kawaii Metal, ooh, it was not taken so well by nope. the Western metal community at first. However, the in Japan, hated Kawaii it. Metal, or more like Idol and Metal, was already a massive hit with the Japanese audiences. Metal an idol is their thing and baby i wonder if they're going to bring in the uh ali sykes bring me the horizon arc and relationship into this because they're they're part of the reasons why bring me the horizon got to play in japan that's how i really found out about baby metal honestly Metal They're is a like perfect a, band a to fuse up the two other genres. Festival, that, Baby you know Metal's what? appearance as a home may look comical, Coast. but the Japanese fans were able to see that they are treating both sides of the genre seriously and honestly. Which now that I think back could be the reason why Baby Metal was generally not accepted too well in the Western world. Metal hey, hits haters, do not like bro. the idea of big corporate music labels manufacturing music, especially if it's metal music. And Baby Metal's background, in a way, is exactly that. Except that it is led by a guy who's really into metal and is at the right place and the right time. Part of what makes Baby Metal work so well is because Koba Metal could take care of the metal side, while Sue Metal, Moa Metal, and Yui Metal, who have at least 5 years of idol experience, could take care of the other side. Fast forwarding to December 21st, 2013, Baby Metal would premiere Gimme Chocolate at the Makuhari Messe event hall. The live performance video would eventually be used as the official music video of the song and is posted on YouTube on February 25th, 2014, true. one day before the release of their debut album. With the backdrop of thousands of fans and combined with the imagery of three girls dancing to a trashy metal track, followed by Black Baby Metal's Onoma Tope shout, this was a recipe to be a viral hit. What also makes this a great kawaii metal song is found in the lyrics. As explained by Sue Metal, the lyrics of the song are about girls and women who love to eat chocolate, but they are afraid of putting on weight. Yep, typical metal issues. When recording Gimme Chocolate, even both Yui Metal and Moa Metal are shocked at what they were asked to scream. So it wouldn't be surprising when all of us listen to this song for the first time. <laughs> Two months later after the release of Gimme Chocolate on YouTube, the Fine Brothers will record an episode of YouTubers React covering Baby Metal and the music videos of Doki hey! Doki Morning, Ine, and Gimme Chocolate. I was Chocolate. one of those YouTubers! The reaction when I first saw that, that video was, what on earth is this? I was Imagine. stunned, but I was filled with excitement and wanting to check out more about them. Somehow, That's I how that I these was, are not bro. random guys who are parodying metal. It felt like there was something more. In all my years of listening the metal i have never felt this type of emotion before which is happiness That's it's just weird. super weird For yeah months of listening to baby metal i would always get back to that fine brothers episode which is unfortunately taken down to feel the excitement of seeing someone new this is my and favorite one how i got to give me chocolate but what about you how did you get to give me chocolate let me know in the comment section down below if it's very simple chat i got to give me chocolate by um i was on um, the metal forum for reddit and then someone said hey have you guys ever seen this crazy stuff da, 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 da. and it was right when i started this channel and i was like whoa 
Let me get up into that. That's crazy to me. That's crazy. I want to I want to watch the Elite. I want to watch it. I want to watch it. We're going to watch it together. Le dame Zeta. I don't I don't know how to I definitely spelled that wrong, guys. Definitely spelled it wrong. I've seen this one before. I've definitely seen the UK one. That's actually where I first heard the song. I don't think I've ever seen the actual music video, though. That's why I, I, let's let's see the music. Let's see this music video. What what is this music video all about? I don't think I've ever seen the music video. Actually, I may have. I I don't quite remember. It's been so long. Oh, we most definitely have seen this. Yes, we've definitely seen this. So this was before Baby Metal was technically on their own. Or no, this was when they were on their own. The first song, they are on their own. It's a little weird. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little weird watching that. Somebody feels uncomfortable. Let's go to when they're a little older. Like a lot of like ten years older. There we go. Budokan. There we go. There we go. Hey, <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah, we're live. Oh, which one okay rock video was it? Let me know, let me know which one okay rock song was it? Cause we could be reacted. You missed it. Last week when we did this, we were watching one okay rock. They are called baby metal. This is true. This is true. I didn't think they were going to be like 10 or 11 years old when that video came out. These, these outfits are my favorites. I don't like the red and black ones. I should be recording right now. Oh well, we've seen this a hundred times.
Leechy. Is there is there a one okay rock song? Oh, my long fall live. Hey. Bro, all I'm saying, all I'm saying, right, is if I'm they better you guys they better come to the United States. Mighty Long Father is a very good one. I think I did that with B Hall, maybe. Maybe it was B-Hall, maybe it wasn't. I'm, I don't know, because I did Mighty Long Fall, and then there was another one I did with them. Hey, li or Liar. What do you want from... That's not Liar. Oh, no, that is Liar. Uh, 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 uh. Hey, if there's a 1OK Rock song you want me to react to, right now, we'll do it. We will do it. Wait, Kitsune is Fox in Japanese? They're opening for the U or Muse in the US? I don't go to any Muse concerts. I don't know any songs by Muse. It's crazy because me and Sue are literally the same. We're, we're both we were both born in '98. I believe we're a month apart, right? I think I think I'm a month older than her, which is crazy to me. Cause she out here doing this, and I'm over here on YouTube doing this. <laughs> it's actually quite sad. I envy it. Oh my god, I was muted. I may have seen that. If, it, if you're talking about baby metal, I may have seen that. It is so weird to me. I think they're very popular in the, uh, or, or their popularity from the Western world. I'm going to be honest. These lyrics are corny. <laughs> but that's literally the point, right? Oh, it just sounds awesome. It just sounds awesome. One OK Rock. No, I haven't. I have not. Budokan Performance 2010. We might have to check that out. No cap. We've seen this tons of times. Get ready for it. <laughs> Welcome, Demented. You're in a country band? What the hell? You're in a country band? And what kind of country? Are we talking about like bluegrass country? Um, sailor boys. Watching all the homes in a country band for you. Even played 4th of July at Edwards Air Force 
base. Oh my goodness. I thought I'd stop by my homie stream and look what I see. I see this greatness. Oh, baby metal, you mean? Bro, we, we are a baby metal stand over here. We started, what, a year ago? And we are 84 videos later? That's crazy. I just got done recording a video of me watching the first time I reacted to baby metal. Or one of the first times I reacted to baby metal. For sure, for sure. Oh, Lichi. If that didn't show up, it probably showed up in the chat on on my end. I had to click that link. I just didn't see it in slobs. Oh, Buffer, man. Hey, hey. All right. Let me go. Let me go. I'm going to go look that thing up. Yo, hold up. Pause. Why is that in the way, bro? Uh, I didn't get a link. I will definitely be opening up Discord, though. Let's see if, if the smaggler daggler was in the music suggestions you can always drop it in music suggestions by the way dun, 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 dun. one okay ron whoa that's not how you spell one that was like w-n-e-w -E one okay rock Budokan, 2007. Oh my god, they go all the way back to 2002? What? I want to see my favorite songs. I want to see if they got some good songs. Mm -mm. I'm not into country anymore. I did do line dancing at the Borderline in 10,000 Oaks in the 90s. The Borderline where there was a mass... Oh! I still don't know what the Borderline is. Let's see. All these have. Oh, never mind. I was about to say. They played Liar then? Oh, you sent it in Discord? Awesome. Oh, you did, you did, you did, you did. What's breaking through? Hey, nobody can match Taka, bro. We're very, we're very young in the ways of being a fan. Oh, I really just broke the side of my chair, bro. Unbelievable. I just broke the side of my chair. Yo. Whoa. That scared me. I'm not going to cap. All right. What's the name of this song? I don't know how to say that in the top left. This is their debut single. This is one of okay K-Rock's debut single. Nice. I, I don't know how to say that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, we're just going to put it as debut single. Let's get into it. Naha Shiso. Naha Shiso. Hey, okay. Okay, hold up. They hit that shit way too hard. Hold up. It's only in 480p. That's how you know it's good. Hold up. We got to go back. They hit that way too hard. Okay. Okay. Hey. 
This is your debut single? Wait, how the hell is this your debut single? Everybody's like, everybody's digging it. Is this like the first song they ever... Oh, this must be the... Oh, Dave. Oh, oh, my small brain. How the hell did they get everybody so hyped? Hold up. I want to go back. I'm going back. I want to go back. How the hell... They get, they got so pumped. They got everybody pumped, like, just like that. What the hell? They hit a switch or something. They got hacks, bro. They got hacks. Look at this. Hold on. Okay, it, the song debuted in 2007. This is conscious from 2010. Okay, that makes more sense. But holy, sh oh my god, y'all. Whoa. These bands are way bigger than I think. I always think, oh, they're in J Japan or whatever. I always think they're just like my small brain, Western world. Okay, he's spinning, he's spinning. I just noticed my boy's missing the star tattoos on his shoulders. The bassist. Oh man, these guys are so young now. They're so young here. Oh, they're building up. There's like a pop punk build up. <laughs> Not death metal so I can hang. This is the this, this is stir. Oh. What's this build up? It's better than being Oh, okay, cool.
Bro, there's so many people there. What happened? Something happened? <laughs> you guys must have heard in the background. Bro. That whole venue, bro, is filled. That shit is filled, bro. The thing is filled. No one on our end said anything bad, so... Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> There's definitely someone in the background. Hold up. My bad, y'all. My bad, y'all. Hope that didn't ruin the video. I'm gonna be mad. Give me one second. <laughs> Y'all worry too much. Psh. Nah, the homie G just dropped some shit, bro. It could have broke, but it didn't. If you know what I mean. It is what it is, though, right? It is what it is. If it would have broke, it would have broke. Who cares, right? <laughs> the copyright system doing its stuff as usual. Oh, no way. No way. Did I just get schmeated on? Stream didn't get muted, did it? It didn't get muted, right? Wow. I'm back. Policy violations. <laughs> wow. I'm back. What just happened? I can't do nothing live, bro. We literally cannot do anything live. Bro. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. There's just some haters, man. Some haters. Trying to have a good time. Enjoy some good music with some good folk. And then they strike me down, bro. I don't think, I think it, it, cause we can't, we got back up, so. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Next time I'll just hold a controller. I'll say it was Guitar Hero or something like that. You know what I mean? But hey, hey. It is, it is what it is. It is, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Who is one okay ride? Let's look at some, let's look at some stuff. Oh yeah, my friend um actually made a song. I wanted to see this. What's waking through? There will always be haters. I just don't get, I'm not monetizing the video. Why would he get struck down? I don't even. Let him have it. Let him have the, the 14 views or whatever. Listen to this though. This is my buddy. My boy.
TJ, he, all right. I gotta find the, the, the picture of me and him. There's one picture of me and him and it was on his tour bus because he plays lead guitar for a band called Escape the Fate, who I've become really close friends with. I wouldn't say close friends with the band, more more so with uh, their lead singer, Craig Mavitt. Um, and maybe Rob a little bit, because I hang out with him a little bit too. But um, yeah, this is TJ. He's a lead guitar in Escape the Fate. And this is his cover song of a Post Malone song called Circles. Uh, some of you guys might know this. Um, this is kind of out of his realm a little bit. But I really think you guys would enjoy this. We couldn't turn around till we were upside down. I'll be the bad guy now. You know okay, word. Thank you, Lychee. Oh, they're on Reaper Studio. <laughs> Post Malone might actually like this. Not bad. I I give him a six out of ten, only because he's got the screaming in there. You know what I'm saying? I never. I always wanted to ask him about his um tattoo on his neck because it's got flowers. And I always told myself when I was getting tattoos that I would never get flowers on my body. And for some reason, I ended up getting just three of them on my arm. All roses, all rose flowers. I didn't even intend to have that. I have more flowers on my one arm than most girls do on their whole body, right? God, bro. But I dig. Oh, so this one was in the Discord. Let's go see what this one. Okay, Rock. Yumi, 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 Yumi. What the hell is this? Hey, I'm not going to get struck, am I? You've been thunderstruck. Hey, if I get struck, just know. It's the homeboy's fault. <laughs> run away and I'll run in circles. Let's oh, this is real, real live. Like, this is live, live. Like, this is raw. This is gonna really. This is one okay rock. Yumi 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 Yumi. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but this video is live live. Like this is as live and raw as you can get. 
So they sound good here. They're pretty good. They're gonna sound good anywhere else. You know what I'm saying? Let's hear this. Let's see what this is about. Oh, a little funk. Okay. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. Look how young they are. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hey. hey that's not bad that's that's so weird it's just weird for me It's not bad. It's just very weird. Cause this is one okay rock. What the? F hey. Bro, what is this? <laughs> Look how young they are in the ways. I mean, they're only a few years younger than me here, but look how young they look. I'm used to Taka being close to 30. Not closer to being a high school graduate. Oh my God. Let me rephrase. They're only a few years younger in this video than me. Not right now. They're way older than me. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Hey. Well, yeah, everybody bumped at 18 and 19. Hey. hey oh it ended oh sh bro that's a solid 8 out of 10 i'm not gonna lie but what's the name of that song yumi 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 give me one second do 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 do